Mass Drunk. If you grew up playing games in the 80s and 90s, then you love a good cheat code. Whether it was the old Konami code, or something you learned from a friend that gave you infinite lives, or a stage select, or using the game genie and hoping that your game wouldn't corrupt or crash. Hell, I still have the notebook that I made in elementary school which contains tons of passwords and cheats and tricks, and of course, plenty of Genesis slander. Genesis duh, Nintendo does. That's about as clever as I would ever get in my life. It's been downhill ever since. But yeah, I wanted to go through this and just talk about some of my favorite secrets, cheats, passwords, and glitches in the Super Nintendo games that I grew up playing, and I want to mention very quickly that yes, all of these codes do in fact work on the SNES Classic, even if you've had it. Of course, I gotta start with the old Contra code. We all know it. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. The code itself is so well known that it has its own Wikipedia article. The most infamous use of this was probably for Contra on NES since it gave you 30 lives and it made a brutally difficult game at least a little more forgiving. But for whatever reason, the code does not work in Contra 3. But it does work in another Konami game, Gradius 3, except, uh, it kills you instantly. Well then, they actually throw you a bit of a curveball here. If you replace left and right in the code with L and R while the game is paused, you'll get full power-ups. This code works in other Konami games as well, like Batman Returns, you can go to the options menu and enter in the code with the Player 2 controller, and that'll get 9 lives for each continue. Turtles in Time does the same thing, just go to the options menu with the second controller, enter the code, and you'll have 10 lives at your disposal. There's a few other non-Konami games that feature a variation of the code. For example, in Final Fight 2, if you do an inverted version of it on the title screen, meaning down, down, up, up, right, left, right, left, then L and R, you and a second player can both play as the same character. In Smart Ball, at the title screen, if you enter the code and hit select before hitting start, you get a stage select screen, so you can start just about anywhere in the game. In Mortal Kombat 3, at the menu screen, it's up, up, down, down, left, right, A, B, A, and you unlock a third menu option titled Cool Stuff, which is a separate list of options that includes this bizarre little Galaga-type shooter that can be played with a second player. Bear in mind this code does not work for Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, just the regular MK3. I'm sure there's other Konami code variants out there, but these were the best ones I was able to find. Let me know in the comments if you know any others. Speaking of midway games like Mortal Kombat, NBA Jam also has a ton of codes, especially Tournament Edition, which features 37 different characters that you can unlock. For example, if you want to play as the Big Hurt Frank Thomas, at the name entry screen, get the cursor over the S, and then hold start and press B, then place the cursor over O and press A, then move to X and hold start while pressing A. Pretty simple, really, and each hidden character has you do something similar to this to unlock them. Whether it's former President Clinton, DJ Jazzy Jeff, Heavy D, or any number of NBA mascots. Tournament Edition also has a crazy number of codes that you can enter when you reach the Tonight's Matchup screen. Everything from Infinite Turbo, to being able to hit threes from anywhere, to dunking from anywhere on the court. And it's usually just a simple six-button input. Like if you want to be on fire the whole game, just press down, right, right, B, A, and left when it says tonight's matchup. Bear in mind for these codes, you gotta input pretty quickly, almost like you're doing a special move in a fighting game. You'll know it works if you see some text pop up right at tip off, like fire enabled or something like that. One of my favorite cheats when I was a kid was the money cheat in SimCity. Let's face it, SimCity can be a pretty tough game, especially if you're playing as a kid with no concept on how to run a city. I mean, all I really wanted to do was just build stuff, and the money cheat at least allowed me to screw around enough that it gave me an incentive to crank through all the scenarios. Getting the money cheat to work is a little involved, though. First, you have to make sure you have zero dollars heading into December of your first year, and you gotta make sure you spend that money on police stations and fire departments and some roads. Seriously, just put those there and don't worry about it. You can bulldoze it later after you have a million dollars. Next, go to the tax screen and lower all four percentages to zero. After you've spent all your money, wait for December to roll around when you get to the tax screen prompt. At this point, hold the L button and continue to hold it through the next couple steps. Click go with figures and wait for December to turn into January. While still holding the L button, go back to the tax screen and raise every percentage as high as it will go. Go back to the main screen, let go of the L button, and abracadabra, congratulations, you're a millionaire. Go spend it on nothing but airports.
Another really fun cheat is for Street Fighter 2 Turbo. You know how you can adjust the speed of the game with the stars on the main menu? Well, what if you could turn that into 10 stars? Yes, that's right, you can turn Street Fighter 2 Turbo into Street Fighter 2 Ludicrous Speed. The only thing missing is making the screen go plaid. To make this work, you use the second player controller, and right when the Street Fighter 2 logo appears, you press down R up L Y B X A. Go to the main menu, and you'll find that you can now add up to 10 stars for speed speed, and uh, yeah, this is just a wee bit faster than what you're used to. This is one of my favorites because of how impressive it is that this game is still mostly playable even in this form. You can still do special moves and everything. But yeah, obviously this game gets a heck of a lot harder, especially against faster opponents, so if you go and try beating the entire game in this mode, you've got your work cut out for you. Here's a funny trick for a game you probably haven't thought of in decades, if you've ever thought of it in the first place. It's for Brett Hull Hockey, the original, not the 95 version, and it removes the computer's goaltender from the game entirely. All you have to do is pause the game at any time, go down to goaltender in net, press right on the d-pad on the second controller, and suddenly you've got an open net for an entire game. This just seems like a simple programming oversight, if anything, but it's still pretty funny that something so simple can cheese a game so badly. I really love Super Ghouls and Ghosts, but that first level is rough to the point that I don't blame people for losing their patience with it quickly, and that sucks because this game is full of tons of great visuals, enemy design, music, and crazy gimmicks like rotating rooms. Therein lies the appeal of stage select codes. If you're an adult with actual stuff to do, then maybe you don't have time to dedicate hours to getting good at certain games, so a code like this will allow you to see the rest of the game, at least partially. Just highlight exit on the options screen with the player 1 controller, then hold L and start on the player 2 controller while pressing start on player 1. That takes you to a secondary menu where you can choose the level and the checkpoint you want to start at along with a sound test. Now there's nothing in your way to get effortlessly killed by these red demons. Ugh. Now, these next few aren't really codes, they're just secrets hidden within the game. The best example would be before you face Dracula in Super Castlevania 4. You start at the edge of a cliff with a stairway going up, but of course you don't take the stairs. Instead, you make a leap of faith and walk down to the lower left corner where you get all three whip upgrades, the cross, and a ton of hearts. I like stuff like this because if you want to fight and beat Dracula with max weapons, you can do that and it gives you some incentive to go back and try and beat him without the invisible staircase for a bit more of a challenge. Super Empire Strikes Back has something similar to this, but at the very beginning of the game, you come across a chasm, press down and B to get off your tauntaun, and there's an invisible platform here with a series of other platforms to the left. Just swing your lightsaber around and various power-ups and extra lives will appear. Here's another one of those hidden things that I found funny. In Link to the Past, if you dash into a tree, sometimes you'll see some apples falling out, or a fairy, and sometimes you'll upset a swarm of bees and they'll come after you, except for one bee, which is referred to as the Golden Bee. You find it near the same place you get the ice rod in the southeastern part of the map. Go into this cave here and dash into the statue and a bee appears. Catch it and keep it in a jar, then release it and watch it go nuts on enemies. Maybe this is old news to some of you, but I had no idea this was a thing until years after I first played this game. It's a pretty dang cool secret, and it even works against the Moth boss in the third crystal dungeon in the Dark World. But bear in mind, if you use your bee helper there, you have to go back to the same place to get him again. Still, it's worth it. I'd like to see a hack or a patchery play this entire game as the bee. I have no idea if that's even within the realm of possibility, but it would be pretty funny. I also have to mention a trick you can do in Final Fantasy VI that really comes in handy if you're getting sick of random battles. It's referred to as the Vanish Doom bug, or the Vanish X-Zone bug. And it only works in early versions of this game, but it does work in the game on the SNES Classic as well. All you have to do is cast Vanish on an enemy, then cast either Doom or X-Zone, and voila! Enemy defeated. This even works on certain bosses as long as they're not immune to status spells. So yeah, tired of those Zone Eaters and Intangirs taking forever to fight? Then just Vanish and X-Zone or Doom them away. Finally, here's a glitch in Link to the Past that allows you to beat the game in about three minutes, and it's pretty easy to do as far as glitches go. All you gotta do is start a brand new game and proceed as you normally would. You head into the main room of the castle with the double doors, go up the stairs, and jump off this spot right here, hit select, and save and quit. 
When you resume, you're back where you got the sword from your uncle, and then head back to where you were before, avoiding every soldier, but this time head to the upstairs door on the left. Go to this window and charge your sword attack so it taps the wall, and keep leaning to the left. That'll get the guard's attention, and he'll attack and push you into the wall. Now you can keep going up past the next room, but stop once you get to the room after that and head to the right. You can kind of see Link's head there. And you want to walk all the way up the right side this time, past all of these rooms. Oh hey Ganon, what's up? Hey, I'm just gonna take this Triforce over here, alright? And yep, just like that, you have completed Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past in three minutes. Alright, that's all for now. I know there's about a gazillion codes and cheats out there, so let me know what I'm missing in the comments. I hope to do a part two of this video and include some Game Genie stuff, so until then, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.